So you're going to Belize, that's great. We've been down here for two months and in this video we're gonna share with you everything we've learned over the last couple months. Yeah, we've been traveling all over the country the last two months and probably like you, before we came down here, we did a lot of research, watched videos, read blogs and stuff, but the thing that we found out is a lot of those videos and blogs were done pre-pandemic. So some things have changed, but there are some things that are the same. So in this video we wanna share with you everything that's kind of updated, new and fresh since the pandemic for your trip coming down to Belize. Hey guys, first let's talk about the ease of access to get down to Belize. So if you're living in North America, there's daily flights from most major airline carriers that come down here. So you're not gonna have any problem finding flights, getting down to Belize, the international airport in Belize City. Right, and the COVID testing down here is super personable and convenient. You can have a doctor or a nurse come straight to your hotel room, your Airbnb, or if you go to a little clinic, it's super convenient. It's just very privatized and very quick too. I think we can get our results within 15 minutes to half an hour. Yeah, there's no like waiting around trying to get appointments or anything like that. Very hands-on, very nice, very professional. Yeah. Um, I was highly impressed yeah. with the COVID testing down here. So when is the best time to travel? Now we, everywhere we go, we always like to travel in the shoulder months in between tourist seasons. We honestly believe that's the best time. That's when you get the best value, the best prices. A lot of the attractions that you can go to in the shoulder months, you might be the only ones there or there's a lot less crowds which is really important. However, what you do wanna do is you wanna watch out for the rainy season. I'm not saying don't come down to Belize during the rainy season, but some of the attractions that you might wanna do, you know, some of the caves and things, if you wanna do any type of that exploring or anything's on the river, there may be flooding, there may just be, you know, the roads may be washed out because the roads get pretty bad in the rainy season. So you just wanna be, you know, careful of that and realize if you're gonna be doing some of those things, maybe not come down during the rainy season. Another great thing about Belize is it's originally a British colony. So overall, everyone speaks English here. You can get away with speaking English everywhere you go. There's a few people that speak some Spanish as well, and their language here is Belizean Creole, but you can speak English everywhere you go. Okay, next let's talk about money. The currency here is really easy to figure out. It's two Belizean dollars equals one US dollar and you can get Belizean dollars, any ATM you go to here. And I would suggest to try to avoid Fridays if at all possible because that's most people's payday around here, which means longer lines, longer wait times. I should also tell you that most places take US dollars and Belizean dollars as well. We just try to carry Belizean dollars with us at all times just in case. Yeah, but a lot of times if you're at a place and they're gonna give you change back, you might get a little bit in Belizean dollars a little bit in US dollars. Don't worry, you'll figure it out. It's two to one ratio, really easy. Mm -hmm. So guys, when you land in Belize, most likely you're gonna land in Belize City at the International Airport. Now there's some people that have said, you know, you should avoid Belize City at all costs. It's dangerous, there's gangs, there's murders. It's an awful place, just don't hang out in Belize City. Well, we actually had to spend a couple of days in Belize City when we were transiting, waiting for different flights and, and to some of the different places we went in Belize. I think it's really relative whether you consider it's a dangerous city or not. I mean, there's certainly places I think that are much more dangerous than that. We stayed in an amazing bed and breakfast and we'll leave a link down below because I would say that probably the only place we would stay in Belize City now because it's such an yeah. amazing bed and breakfast. Francois is such an amazing host. Thank you so much. But we were, you know, driving around Belize City. We stayed in Belize City at night. We went out, we walked to a restaurant. Um, never felt unsafe or anything okay. like that. And yeah. so it's really relative. So I just want to tell you, if you have to spend a night or so in Belize City, don't be afraid. Don't listen to all the, you know, uh, fear mongering or whatever. You'll be okay. Just, you know, stay smart, travel smart, and you'll be fine in Belize City. Now let's talk about transportation when you get to Belize City. There's a couple of options when visiting the Kays. And the first one I want to go over, we've flown on both of the airlines. One is Tropic and one is Maya Air. Great flights that we've had and they start at about 60 US dollars. The second way is by water taxi. And we would recommend to use San Pedro Express water taxi because we've heard there's a chance that others might break down. So 
I would suggest definitely to use San Pedro Water Taxi. So let's say you're going to go to the jungle first or you're going to drive down the coast or something like that. So then what you're going to need is a rental car. Now we can tell you, you may have your favorites, but here in Belize, Crystal Rental Car is probably the best rental car agency that we've used. There's, uh, it might look a little sketchy, you know, you don't know the name or anything, but trust us, you can use them. Uh, they're verified by us. Um, they have, you know, great staff, great prices. And the big thing is if you're looking to go into Guatemala, they are the only uh, rental car agency that we've heard of that'll allow you to take the rental car over into Guatemala if you want to see Tikal or some of the other mine ruin sites like that. Okay, here's the deal with going to Guatemala though. Currently, because of the pandemic, they have some restrictions. If you're going to go over into Guatemala, um, they want you to actually spend three or four days in Guatemala. So you can't really just do a day trip and then come back over. If you want to go over, you want to see Tikal, those types of things, you're going to have to plan for three or four days in Guatemala. So just keep that in mind when you're getting your rental car or you're making your arrangements. But again, like we said, Crystal Rental Car, highly recommend them, you'll have no issue. For transportation, one of the most expensive things you're gonna have is renting a car or a golf cart. For example, on the Ks, be prepared. It can be as much as $250 a week to rent a golf cart there, or places like Placencia, it can be as much as $400 a week. So when it comes to the type of vehicle you want to rent, if you're gonna actually rent a vehicle here, uh, we rented small and mid-sized SUVs just because we had the kids here with us and we needed more space. But one of the things that we would highly recommend is getting uh, all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, especially if you're going to be exploring kind of off the beaten path. Now the roads are pretty decent here, but like we said, if you're going to go, you know, check out caves or you want to do some hiking, or like we said, when it rains, some of the roads get washed out, it gets muddy, it gets a little bit hard to get around. So you really want to have that four-wheel drive, especially if you're going to be over in San Ignacio in the jungle, checking out like Barton Cave Creek or some of the caves or going off and checking out waterfalls like we like to do, you're going to want to have that all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. So just, just add that on there. So the other thing to be aware of is there is police checkpoints throughout the country when you're traveling around. If you've never you know, dealt with this before, most of the time, 99% of the time, the police are friendly. They're just checking for things like making sure your registration, your tags are up to date, that type of thing. There is something a little bit weird during COVID that uh, they were checking to see if you had your masks on in the car, which yeah, I don't know the logic behind that. You can figure it out, but it's the law down here. So when we pull up to a police checkpoint, you have to make sure you have your masks on. If you don't, uh, you could get a ticket for that. So just make sure you have masks on in the car when you get up to the police checkpoint. But like I said, 99% of the time they're friendly. They're just gonna wave you along and have a, have a great day. Be polite be courteous, you know, they're just trying to do their job and you'll have no problem at the police check. So let's talk about cellular and Wi-Fi connectivity. When we came down here to Belize, we just added an international plan to our current phone carrier and we've had no issues at all with both cellular and data while we're down here. We did have some issues with people trying to actually call us while we were in Belize, but as far as us making phone calls, being able to call places local or use data, there are no issues whatsoever in that. So unlike some countries you're not going to have to go get that local country sim and a data plan and all that you could probably do that if you wanted to but we really didn't see the need to do it and we had no problems on an international plan now when it comes to wi-fi again that's really dependent on where are you staying at obviously if you're in a hotel or you're at a cafe where everybody's sharing the wi-fi it's going to be a little bit spotty and a little bit slower whereas if you're staying in an airbnb or you have your own private wi-fi you're going to have you know decent wi-fi speeds now nothing is going to be lightning fast like you would see in the more developed world, but it's pretty good Wi-Fi anywhere you go and we had no issues with it. Speaking of Airbnbs, for most of our time here, we've stayed in Airbnbs and it's been a great experience. In fact, sometimes it's really exceeded our expectations. And if you're gonna go have the jungle experience in San Ignacio, we would highly recommend to go stay in eco-friendly lodging to really immerse yourself in the jungle. What a great experience that was. Getting to look out the window and seeing toucans eating off the mango tree, how special was that. And also staying in Marriott's newest resort in San Pedro was a fabulous exotic experience like none other as well. We'll leave some links down below if you'd like to check out that video. And later on, we're gonna go more 
more into detail where we would recommend to stay and what to do in different places. So one of the important things to remember here is that Belize is a developing nation. So the infrastructure here is gonna be a little bit more fragile than maybe what you're accustomed to back in a more developed world. So things like the plumbing here is a little bit, you know, harder to get used to. You can't just throw, you know, throw everything down the toilet. Uh, when it rains, you may get some sewer smell coming up and things like that. That's totally normal um, for the infrastructure here. And then also when it comes to the AC, um, they're gonna ask you that, you know, only have the AC on maybe when you're staying in the room you know actually physically in the room or at night when you're sleeping they don't want you to just be running the AC non-stop because it the electricity is very very expensive I know for us we used AC you know for the first couple weeks and then finally we just got to a point where a lot of times we would just shut the AC off because we got more acclimated to the weather and the climate down here we were just able to open the windows and be fine with it but just you need to understand that that the infrastructure here is probably a little bit more fragile than you're used to all right guys let's talk food so from our experience here, you're usually safe ordering the seafood, the pork, the chicken. Beef on the other hand is hit or miss. It's probably not going to be what you're used to with the burgers or the steaks. However, everything here is locally sourced and fresh and healthy. In fact, we've lost weight since being here, just eating all the foods. And it's very common to see rice and beans and a little salad on the side of whatever you order here. Yeah, when we're talking about food, guys, we'll let you know that on the case, the street vendors are legit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get some of the best food on the island for really, really affordable, reasonable prices, sometimes even better than what the restaurants are gonna charge you. I know I think we got stuff like jerk chicken or say like a shrimp or a lobster kebab is about maybe three to five dollars US. Mm -hmm. If you want an entire meal, you know, adding in rice and beans or potatoes or sides and salad and stuff like that, you're only gonna pay about five to eight dollars US. So mm -hmm. the the food is amazing. The yeah. vendors are really good at what they do. And if you're looking to save some money and just, you know, maybe you're on a budget or whatever, I highly recommend hit up the street vendors. Yeah. The food is amazing, it's tasty, sometimes better than the restaurants. You won't you won't be you know sorry if you do that. When it comes to drinks, your local rum and Bellican beer is going to be the cheapest. On the other hand, the wine and brand labeled liquors are going to be a little bit more expensive. Bottled water by Crystal is available anywhere in the country and when we were on the islands or in the Cays, we drank just bottled water there. However, in places like San Ignacio and Placencia, we were good drinking the tap water. It was completely safe. So it's your choice on that. However, we would also recommend if you'd like to reduce the amount of plastics you're using, bring your own water filter and your own container for water as well. So on another note, amazing locally sourced and made coffee is available almost everywhere as well as fresh pressed juices and smoothie style drinks. I think a lot of times in the mornings we would just end up drinking coffee and maybe getting like a smoothie or some juice and then just skipping the meal all the way until the evening time and we were fine doing that. Um, and, and the locally made coffee here is amazing. Um, we bought some just to have with us in the room and stuff as well. You're not going to go wrong with the locally made coffee. If you're staying in San Pedro, we'd highly recommend north of the bridge, go check out the farmhouse. They've got really good coffee, uh, juices and drinks there. If you're on K Cocker, you can check out Ice and Beans or Namaste Cafe. And then if you're staying in Placencia, you can check out Above Grounds and then Beaches and Cream. Those are some of our favorite places to stop and get a nice little coffee drink. Next, we're gonna talk about where to stay and what to do at different places in Belize. So San Pedro is a very small, very busy city. And there you're gonna have a lot of partying, loud music. Drunk tourists. Yeah, that, that kind of thing. thing. <laughs> so if that's not your scene, we would suggest to go more north in Ambergris Cay across the bridge. And there's some amazing places over there that are totally worth it. Like the truck stops, a lot of fun secret beaches over there, and Capricorn. I definitely would suggest that for amazing food. Yeah, just, just to be clear, I mean, you're still gonna have all the great stuff north of the bridge. Just the vibe is a little bit more casual, a little bit more laid back. Needless do I say, maybe a little bit more adultish like us. If you don't want the constant noise, constant party scene, 
then we'd highly recommend going north of the bridge. That was our favorite place. Yeah. However, inside San Pedro, we would highly recommend going and checking out Gypsy, Caramba, Sandy Toes was a lot of fun. And, and LVs. also LVs, yeah. If you're going to Key Cocker, then we highly recommend staying on the south side of the island. Uh, we stayed at Coco Beach, which was formerly known as Popeyes, and you may still see that pop up on some of the search engines. Or Seaside Cabanas was also a really nice place down there. If you want more of an upscale kind of resort feel, Iguana Reef is a really great place to stay. So on Key Cocker, you can walk pretty much anywhere. You don't need a golf cart, you don't need a bicycle, anything like that. If you want to get those, you can, but we walked almost everywhere and it's safe at all hours. We didn't have any problems at all on Key Cocker. When it comes to that restaurant and bar that's right at the split in Key Cocker, we would recommend just skipping that thing all together. Honestly, the, the food was overpriced, the drinks were overpriced, food was kind of mediocre, the, the service wasn't that great. It's just a huge tourist trap and you can skip that thing all together. You can literally walk 50 feet south of the split and go to the sip and dip and you're gonna have better service, better drinks, a lot more affordable prices and a really great time with the same vibe and the same atmosphere. Sip and dip's got, you know, water swings, they've got hammocks for hanging out, you can swim in the ocean if you can want or you can just sit back and tan and have a great day. Make sure when you go to sip and dip, ask for Wilbur, he will take care of you, but we highly recommend. We spent so many days at Sip and Dip, uh, really great experience, so check it out. We also wanna talk about Gilbert's taxi service. He's amazing, we what love Gilbert. Yeah. We're gonna leave a link down below how to get a hold of him. He'll get you from the airport to wherever you need to go on the island, and if you ask, he'll also give you a tour of the whole island. He's lived there all his life, and he'll give you the ins and outs, only the stuff that the locals know about. Really great tour from Gilbert. We also saw some other videos of people saying they're paying $20 US for taxis on Cake Cocker. Don't spend that much money. Gilbert will charge you $5 US or 10 Belize to go anywhere and you won't be disappointed. So check him out. You can send him a text, you can WhatsApp him, but we'll leave his contact information down below. In San Ignacio, stay down in the Crystal Ray region. It's just a short walk to town. It's a really great area. We stayed in a lovely Airbnb there that was eco-friendly. It's called Alma Del Rio. We'll leave a link down below. The hosts there are Tom and Hottis. I would highly recommend them. As far as restaurants in San Ignacio, we loved the Bluffs and guava lamb and also Talaka smokehouse. Yeah, our son there got this meat plate that was like $20 US for like just tons and tons of smoked meat. It was amazing. Yeah. You can also get amazing local food pretty much anywhere in San Ignacio. Um, so you can just walk up to any of the street vendors or any of the local establishments you see. They all serve great food. It's all really, you know, we, we would highly recommend them. They also have some Salvadorian and Mayan dishes and, and restaurants that serve that food specifically that is just, you gotta try it. Mm, um, and you know, you won't, you won't be disappointed at all. So also in San Ignacio, you have the famous farm Farmers market which you can get pretty much any produce you want they also sell all sorts of other stuff um, so you want to check that out the best days to go are Tuesday and Saturday mm -hmm. there's also a Mennonite community over in Spanish Lookout and if you ever see the Mennonites selling their their locally made baked goods or pies ugh, just it's totally worth just it. do it it'll yeah. be a little taste of home that you'll you will not regret that you got it so if you see the Mennonites at the farmer's market or you see them out selling it anywhere, just go ahead and pick it up. As far as restaurants at Placencia, we really loved the Turtle Inn and Mariposa. And those are actually resorts, but you don't have to be a guest staying there. They really are welcoming and they encourage others outside of the resort to come, have dinner, have a drink. So I would highly recommend that. Yeah, and the one night at Mariposa, they actually had the local Garfuna drummers come in. So you got some, you know, some local culture yeah. as well, which is really amazing. They, a lot of times they'll do live music and stuff like that so you get a little bit extra when you go to these places sometimes right and in the town of Placencia the little village there's rum fish there's Rick's cafe and if you're having a sweet tooth tutti frutti is really good too yep absolutely okay let's talk about what are you gonna do what are the things you're gonna want to do down here in Belize well obviously if you're out on the K's mm. you're probably gonna want to lay on the beach and get a little suntan so the beach is always an option wherever you go um, that's one thing you want to do we also you know want to recommend some of the tours that you can go out and do I think you know whole Chen mm -hmm. uh, going out and doing snorkeling in whole Chen you can swim with sharks or you can just go out and swim with the rays and just see the beautiful sea turtles and all it's a, it's a marine reserve that's very Super well fun. kept um, it's it's really awesome if you want to go out and do a snorkeling tour there or a diving tour and speaking of diving there's also the world-famous 
blue hole, which if you saw our video, you can go snorkeling and diving in. I will mention that for diving, it is kind of a bucket list dive, but when you add in decompressions, you're only getting about 14 minutes uh, down in the actual blue hole. So it's one of those things like you wanna say that you did it, but you're getting a 14 minute dive once you finally get down into the blue hole. So on the Ks, in addition to the beach and snorkeling and diving, you can also go out for a fishing expedition. You know, we mentioned, we put it in one of our videos, Gonzales Adventures will take you out for a day fishing and uh, you will not be disappointed there. You'll catch a lot of fish, they'll cook it up for you. You can have your own little uh, basically picnic, picnic on, on, the the, on a private island. <laughs> yeah. So that's something fun to do. One of the other things that we would say to do is a sunset catamaran tour. Um, we almost didn't do this, but we are so glad that we yeah. did. It's romantic, it's beautiful. You get to see the islands, the Ks in a completely different way than you're normally seeing it. Mm -hmm. um, it's really reasonable and affordable, and it's just a great night experience to go out on that catamaran uh, at sunset. In San Ignacio, this is known as the adventure capital for good reason. There's yeah. so much fun stuff to do there. Our kids um, wore us out. <laughs> yes. <really>. Yeah. <laughs> you can do kayaking, zip lining, you can do ride ATVs and that's out to a secret waterfall and we swam there and then rode back. That was quite an adventure. And then we almost skipped the uh, Mayan ruins tour and I'm so glad we didn't. We, we thought that it might be just because it's like history and all that we thought like you know people if they're not into that they might not be interested or be kind of boring but yeah. it was the exact opposite. opposite yeah all of our kids had questions for the tour guide and he was really good at answering those you can also do hiking see some of the wildlife the monkeys and all of that and then I think our favorite was the ATM cave tour. Yeah, definitely. We all felt like Indiana Jones in there. There was like swimming, climbing, going through small crevices, and just the history. It was so rich with history in there, and the tour guide was good at explaining all that. Too. Yeah, so if you want to feel like the Goonies or Indiana <laughs> Jones with a little bit of history and culture, do not skip the ATM cave. Um, there's not many videos out. There's not a lot of information mm. on it you won't be disappointed, just take our word for it. Yeah. So in Placencia, you have a lot of the same tours and stuff that are running on the Ks or in San Ignacio, but some of the unique things you can do here is they do have the Jaguar Reserve, which you can go up to and spend the day at. There's tons of hikes there, there's secret waterfalls you can go to, plus you can learn about all the amazing wildlife that they have here in Belize. Maybe even see a Jaguar, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, your chances are probably slim, but you can go out and you can actually do that. Some of the other cool things they have here is they have a lot of cultural things and something uh, like the Garfuna culture down here. Mm. Uh, you can do a lot of that. And they also have something that's called uh, Taste Your Way Through Belize. So they do like tasting tours where you get to go and you get to do different types of tastings of all the amazing foods mm. they have here in Belize. And we didn't do it, but we heard it highly recommended. There's also a spice farm a little bit south of Placencia that you can do a day trip down. So we would highly say if that's something you're interested in do your own research check it out but we heard a lot of people say the spice farm was worth the time to go see that when it comes to all these adventures we really want to emphasize having a reputable guide we're gonna leave a link down below we were in connection with a local expat here and he knew of a very reputable guide Raphael and we're so glad we used him he hooked us up with all these amazing tour guides that knew what they were doing they knew what they're talking about and and at places like the ATM cave, that's really important, even just for safety and learning all the rich history as well. We hate to mention this, but I think it's something that it's important to address, especially if you want to know before you go to Belize. Right. And that's that the entire kind of, you know, lifestyle and atmosphere down here in Belize is go slow. Mm -hmm. And that means things are gonna operate slower, it's more laid back, and you really need, when you come down here to Belize, you need to leave all that stress and that hurried lifestyle mm -hmm. back wherever we came from and embrace the local culture. It's sad to say, but we did see it on a couple occasions where you saw people just being rude to wait staff, being rude to locals and things like that because they didn't realize that was the culture here. You're gonna have to realize that when you go to a restaurant, it's gonna take a little bit longer than 10 or 15 minutes to get your food. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you don't wanna wait, just order an appetizer or something ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Tell them, hey, we're really hungry, can we get an appetizer? But you wanna just understand that, that it is go slow. The Belizean people mm -hmm. are super friendly. They're gonna bend over backwards yeah. as far as service and hospitality to take care of you. But it's just the culture down here to kind of be more laid back mm -hmm. and, and going slow. And it's funny, we could always tell 
when there is new tourists in any location we're at because they're running around, scurrying around, <laughs> everything's hurry, 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 fast, 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 driving fast, trying to eat fast. Yeah. Uh, they were still living that mm -hmm. fast paced lifestyle that we have back in the Western world or wherever we come from. But just remember that when you come down here, guys, embrace their culture. This We're guests in their country. Definitely. Embrace their culture, slow down, mm -hmm. have a drink, have an appetizer, whatever you need to do, but embrace the go slow attitude and you'll have a great time. So guys, we hope this was uh, you know valuable for you guys, an updated version of what to know before you go to Belize post pandemic with some of the changes and things that have gone on. Um, if you have any questions, please leave your, your comments uh, or questions down in the comments section. We'll be sure to answer those or we will point you in the right direction. We can also send you links or get you to some people that we know that could help you out with any questions you have. We just wanna you know, make sure that you have an amazing stay when you come to Belize. So please leave comments, leave questions. We'll do our best to answer them all or point you in the right direction. And as always guys, stay crazy.